First of all, on behalf of Harbinger Systems, a warm welcome to all of you and a very good morning and a very good afternoon. I am Dinesh Vaidya, Senior Project Lead, Harbinger Systems, your host for today. I am pleased to welcome you to today's webinar on Internet of Things, Application Frameworks in IoT. This is our third webinar for IoT and we have conducted series of webinars on many wide range of technological topics which also might be of your interest. You can view them on, on demand at our website. I introduce our fellow presenter for today's session, Mr. Abhijit Gokhale. He is an associate technical lead at Harbinger Systems. Abhijit with close to five years of experience in design and development of enterprise systems across e-learning domain has worked on multitude of challenging process projects with technologies ranging from JavaScript frameworks, J2E, e, shell segment scripting and many more. So without further ado, let's begin our session for today. Our agenda for today is pretty simple. We will start our discussion with factors to consider while building an Internet of Things application. Here we would uh, consider factors like scalability, security, privacy and concurrency. The next thing we would see is the basic building blocks for any Internet of Things application. After that, we would turn our attention towards the need for having an application framework for Internet of Things. talk about some important factors one should consider while building an Internet of Things for the many of hundred of connected devices out there. Building IoT apps will require a shift in mindset by developers from focusing on devices to focusing on services based on user data. That is, need to create service-based applications rather than device-based applications. It will also require apps that work off a central network rather than having an individual app for every service. It is vital to remember that not everyone shares the same sensitivities as it pertains to online safety, security and privacy. Developers need to address privacy and data security in terms of access control, client privacy and data authentication. Another point to remember is concurrency. It is not something that we can just framework away. This means it's not a good idea to treat concurrency issues in the same way for, app, for all applications simply because applications are very different in nature. For instance, one application sends messages and the connection goes down. The system, however, does not stop producing more data. In this scenario, should we start to buffer all unsent messages or only some or only those of a certain importance for a certain maximum time? It all depends on the nature of the application. Those are some really valuable points you made, Abhijit. Now everyone would be curious to know what it takes to build an IoT application. What are the elements? What are the building blocks? what kind of infrastructure is involved. 
which all sensors are deployed and n number of such questions must be popping up in every mind. Would you like to throw some light on this aspect too? Sure Dinesh. IoT consists of many elements ranging from storage, device, processing, localization, tracking, identification, communication, sensors and actuators. Out of this, sensing, computing and identification are the important technologies. The ability of sensing the environment and to self-organize ad hoc networks represents an important feature from the IoT perspective. Wireless technologies will play a key role in a way where the major part of the data traffic between the objects will be carried in a wireless way. On the other part, reduction in terms of size, weight, energy consumption and cost of the radio can lead us to a new era where radios could be integrated in almost all objects. This will add the word anything to the anytime, anywhere, any media vision. The wireless sensor networks and radio frequency identification are considered as the two building blocks of sensing and communication technology. RFID is a technology uh, that provides embedded communication paradigm and it enables design of microchips for wireless data communication. RFID tags are expected to play a key role as enabling identification technology in IoT. They help in automatic identification of anything they are attached to acting as an electronic barcode. Wherein wireless sensor networks consist of a certain number which can be very high of sensing modes communicating in a wireless multi-hub fashion. Thanks Abhijit. Now we all know the factors to be considered and all the elements involved in a typical IoT application. You covered them really very well. Now everyone must be ready to try and develop an application themselves. How easy or difficult it is to do that? Does the developer need to write some cryptic code, um, low level stuff or for achieving this or are there some frameworks which help the developer, which helps to make the life of developer easy. It would be great if you can give some insight on this topic also. Dinesh, the next couple of slides will cover all these questions. Before looking into actual IoT framework, we'll first need to understand the importance of the framework. In IoT frameworks, it might help to support the interaction between the things. It allows for more complex structures like distributed computing and the development of distributed applications. The development frameworks will appeal to developers who are more comfortable with developing web application scripts or coding through an application programming interface. Framework hide the details of machine hardware interactions. Now let us see a brief overview of the IoT framework. The framework consists of three parts. At the top we have an application service layer. This is an independent layer that interoperates with the IoT framework to provide domain specific and application oriented services. In the middle we have the core IoT framework which comprises of two layers utility layer at the top. Utility, utility layer comprises of utilities which can be used by various applications in application service layer. The possible utilities for applications could be navigation, tracking, location services. IoT service layer. This service layer provides various services for interoperability among entities in targeted IoT environment. This includes various services like device communication service, device management mediator service, security, location, data and external interface service. At the bottom of the, uh, at the, bottom of the framework we have IoT environment which represents the network of the physical entities or things in the Internet of Things. Wonderful. What I learned from this discussion till now is 
that the IoT ecosystem can contain a variety of different elements or things, what you call them, uh, which interact with each, each other. How do they communicate? What, what is the special, is there any special communication protocol which makes this communication possible? Or do we use some existing protocols uh, to make this happen? Uh, can can just throw some more light on this? Sure. The communication protocols designed for the IoT platform in a way where all the objects or things are combined to analyze location, intent, and even emotions over a network. An IoT application frequently involves devices or smart object transmitting information regarding its state context or other measurements to the clients or devices. Some of the communication patterns which includes in the IoT platform are D2D where device must communicate with each other. D2S where device data must be collected and sent to the server infrastructure. And finally S2S where server infrastructure has to share the device data possibly providing it back to the devices or to a people. Some of the communication protocols like message queuing, telemetry transport protocol, constrained application protocol, extensible messaging and presence protocol, SOAP and UPnP along with their special characteristics are listed in the table. Out of this, XMPP and SOAP are XML based, MQTT and COAP falls under the D2D pattern. XMPP falls under the D2S pattern and SOAP under the S2S pattern. Now if we think from the user's point of view, MQTT can be used in a pervasive device, smartphones or even energy monitoring equipment. COAP can be used in simple electronic or resource constraint devices. XMPP can be used in smart grid and social networking services. So that is simple object access protocol can be used to implement web service in the computer networks. Universal plug and play permits network devices to, to seamlessly discover each other presence on the network. There are many frameworks and platforms available for IoT out of which few are listed on this slide. Next, we will cover a couple of frameworks, namely AllJoin and Machina.io, and a couple of platforms by Oracle and Axida. Okay, so Abhijit, you said that there are many frameworks and platforms available. So is there any specific reason we are uh, going to discuss only these four? Uh, well, Dinesh, out of this, both frameworks are open source and based on C++ technology at its core. Both the platforms are proprietary and based on Java. Okay. Now let us start looking into them one by one. All joint framework by Allsyn Alliance. It is open source software that allows for proximity peer to peer over various transport. It is written in C++ at its core and provides multiple language bindings and complete implementation across various operating system and chipset. The AllGen framework provides an object oriented approach to making it peer to peer easy avoiding the need to ever deal with the lower level network protocols and hardware. Internally, it implements a distributed software bus. The bus provides the medium that enables on-join applications to communicate via published APIs. Application could be a firmware on microcontrollers, mobile device apps, or traditional applications on PCs or servers. Application publishing APIs are the services while consuming those APIs are termed as clients. An application can be both act as a service and as a client, which makes all join a peer-to-peer -peer system. Communication is via messages that map directly to APIs 
in high level programming languages great so uh, abhijit you said that this is a framework by uh, what uh, alsin alliance so i'm curious to know more like is this an alliance of many organizers organizations working together for a cause or something like that uh yes the alsin alliance is the consortium of companies 35 as of today that are collaborating on an open source software framework it allows devices and systems to autonomously discover and interact with nearby products regardless of its brand transport layer platform or the operating system and all join is the framework code base hope that answers your question dinesh yes abhijit thanks thanks for that now let us see the actual framework the framework is divided into three parts application base service framework and at the bottom we have the all join core framework the core framework has two main architectural components the client library and the router the client library the in client library all join applications are clients of the router applications are paired if they implement both client and service functionality the client library is what software developers interact with there are two implementations of the client library the standard client and the thin client the standard client is targeted at applications running in high operating high level operating system environment native implementation is in c++ and there are number of language bindings including dotnet java for various platforms which is provided by the client library the thin client is targeted at applications that would reside deeply on the embedded devices for example the device firmware it targets a very minimal memory it is implemented in c at its core and currently there are no language bindings available for the thin client the second component is the router any node containing the router is called as routing node the router is built using the standard client library and must run on high level operating systems this can be deployed as stand alone daemon service or integrated with the standard client in an application the router functionality consists of bus management and routing all join messages the bus management includes managing the namespace and cross device communication the message routing consists of delivering messages between the applications or to the router itself now let's move on to the next framework that is machina.io by applied informatics the framework is based on applied informatics existing c++ toolkits most notably the poco c++ libraries over here the poco stands for portable component the most important feature of the framework is the integrate javascript runtime environment based on the v8 javascript engine this allows to use javascript as a first class language for writing the iot application the framework provides interfaces to various sensors devices and receivers it also supports the mqtt protocol the framework consists of four parts starting with the core services at the bottom which includes the remoting core and open service platform then we have network services on top of it wherein we have different protocols soap json rpc grep mqtt on top of network services we have sensors and devices which consists of gps and gnss it also provides field bus and wireless communication 
And at the very top, we have the application environment. The core parts of the framework are the OSP, remoting, and the universal plug and play. The framework helps to collect the data from various sensors, store the data in a local SQLite database on the device, and upload that data to a cloud service. It provides dynamic web pages, REST web services, all with a few lines of JavaScript. With the integration of remoting based C++ to JavaScript bridge, the native C++ classes can easily be accessible from JavaScript without need to write any glue code. This framework will appear or will be out in the market in this fall. Okay, great. So uh, looking at the diagram, I'm, I'm a bit uh, curious on what is this uh, mydevices.net? Uh, and open services platform. Are they part of the framework or there are third party services which the framework uses? Okay, so both of these are independent features provided by the Applied Informatics. MyDevices.net is a web and cloud based platform. With MyDevices.net, any device with a built in web server can be securely accessed remotely over the internet using any web client running PC or a server or even on a smartphone. The open service platform enables the creation, deployment and management of dynamically extensible applications. It is based on powerful plug and play and service model. Application built with OSP can be extended, upgraded and managed even when deployed in the field. Now let's move the life cycle of the application from collection to analysis. Now let us look at the, some of the key components. In Gateway, Oracle provides the Oracle Java IC embedded, which brings the industry leading reliability, robust performance, throughput, security, and cross-platform support to a wide range of embedded systems, including the healthcare, aggregation managers, and industrial automation. Oracle Java Embedded Suite provides ready-made middleware capabilities for embedded devices, supporting a smooth flow of data across the architecture. Oracle Event Processing for Oracle Java Embedded allows for integrating processing in-flight data on the edge device itself. This eliminates the latencies associated with the backend processing. Moving on to the data center platform. In data center platform, Oracle offers Oracle Fusion middleware, which enables structured and unstructured data, which can be processed, analyzed, and integrated with the transaction systems in real time. It also provides actionable business intelligence and supports better informed decision making throughout the enterprise. Its event processing capabilities equip gateway with device level analysis, filtering and pattern matching tools. Oracle business applications and industry applications enable organizations to use device data in areas such as finance across industries, trading time to market, 
reducing the cost and delivering competitive advantage. Oracle Engineer Systems provides the ideal foundation for deployments. These are pre-tested, pre-configured and pre-certified hardware systems. Okay, so uh, Abhijit, uh, are there any tools which uh, Oracle provides for like development environments or tools which will facilitate the development of IoT applications, maybe faster development or something like that? Uh, yes, Dinesh, there are development tools which Oracle offers, out of which Oracle BPN suit for processes and Oracle ADF or Web Center for the UI. Thanks. Thank you. Moving on to the Axid IoT platform. It includes the Axida agent technology and the Axida toolkit for Java MEL. It supports end-to-end -end enterprise capabilities using Java E technology and the Oracle data group. It provides message queuing for reliable end-to-end -end data transfer. It also supports security based on SSL communication with authentication and authorization. It provides device and asset management, tracking and monitoring, complex event processing and even the location services. The platform consists of five components. The first one is the application services. A powerful platform API with a rich set of built-in functions to access the core Acida platform data and the asset functionality. This purpose, it makes use of easy to customize script, which is based on Groovy. It provides the ability to manage assets, query historical data for assets, search for assets, and alarms and many more features. It provides authentication, authorization, and transportation security. It also supports SOAP and RESTful web service interfaces. The next component is the integration framework. An extensible framework built on standards-based message queue technology that accelerates the integration between the Axida platform and the enterprise systems. It allows the Axida platform to send and receive messages and relevant data about event that occurs in the system. Message service is tightly bound to Axida objects and system events to enable a developer-friendly service. This helps to manage the flow of information and the control between the Axida platform and the external services. Hey, Amitith, you, you mentioned about enterprise systems. So uh, which enterprise systems are you referring to over here? Yeah, so over here we are referring to the ERP, for example, SAP, and CRM systems such as Salesforce.com. Okay. The third component is the device and asset management. Axida connected machine management application helps to deliver proactive service to the range of devices. This improves the uptime, slashing the service cost, offers value added services based on the device's data. Axida connected machine management application provide information from web-based user interface to monitor, manage, and repair wired wireless intelligent IoT assets. Now, in connected machine management application, it offers five different services. The connected service, which helps in monitoring. Connected access, to provide the remote access. Connected content, which can be used for content distribution connected reporting to generate the reports and dashboards and the connected configuration to store and access the asset configuration. The fourth component is the IoT data management. This component consists of three parts. Rules engine, data model and servers, server and data services. 
tools engine for processing the incoming data, responding to the events, and triggering actions on the Axida platform. It provides the intuitive UI to rapidly implement sophisticated rules with thresholds and expressions. It also allows to extend the rules engine using Axida scripting API to mash up the platform capabilities with other cloud-based services. Data model stores machine-to-machine -machine data, device and asset types, locations and files. Models can be easily enhanced with the extended database objects to accommodate the customization. Server and device data services. Processing engine that handles the device data, files, events or locations, all processing for the platform. It includes the extensive built-in security capabilities to manage the user roles, user groups and device groups. A configuration console enables to manage rules and models definition. It also helps in asset grouping, notification and permissions. The fifth component is the IoT connectivity. The Axida Machine Cloud service includes IoT connectivity services, the software agents and toolkits that enables to establish the connectivity between the devices or assets and the Axida platform. It allows to choose the communication method and hardware that needs the IoT solution. It can connect to any product using any device over any communication channel. It could be a cellular network over the internet, Wi-Fi or satellite. Wow, thanks Abhijit. That gives us a lot of options to choose from. Maybe we can choose one of the frameworks and do a separate webinar on it in the near future. Uh, now can we please go over the upcoming challenges and benefits? Certainly. Some of the key benefits of IoT are communication, control and automation and cost savings. We'll see one by one. Communication. control and automation. In connected world, a business will have visibility into a device's condition. In many cases, a business or consumer will also able to remotely control a device. For example, a business can remotely turn on or shut down a specific piece of equipment or adjust the temperature in a climate control environment. Meanwhile, a consumer can use IoT to unlock their car or even start the washing machine. Cost savings. Measurement provides the actual performance, data and the equipment health instead of just estimates. Business, particularly industrial companies, lose money when the equipment fails. With the new sensor information, IoT can help a company save money by minimizing the equipment failure and allowing the business to perform planned maintenance. Now let us see some of the important challenges for the IoT. Standardization and integration. In IoT, multitude of heterogeneous devices communicates and rearranges their network configuration in an autonomous way and standards regarding the spectrum allocation, radiation power levels, and communication protocols are primary importance. Standards are required for bidirectional communication and information exchange among things, their environment, and the entities that have an interest either in monitoring, controlling, or assisting the things. 
So there is a need for a common standardization and integration solution in the IoT environment. Security and privacy. As there are large number of devices which are present in the IoT infrastructure, the issue of having sufficient security on devices with limited capabilities has to be addressed and solved convincingly. The technological architectures preserving the respect of privacy have to be developed and used as a basis for any future development. Identity management and interoperability. Interoperability among devices and services in IoT infrastructure need to be considered as the important aspect. It includes the consistent standardized platform, standardized testing methodologies, and well-suited testing tools. The standardized platform is need to obtain the consistency. The standardized testing methodologies based on test specifications will specify how to validate device and services. The testing tools accurately test the test suits will ensure the interoperability of devices and services. In IoT semantics, interoperability becomes imperative for the providers and requesters to communicate meaningfully with each other despite the heterogeneous nature of the information structure. Apart from these challenges, middleware will play a key role in the IoT. In the present computing environment, it is not possible to impose standards and make everyone comply. Therefore, we need a system to join the heterogeneous components together and to ensure the interoperability between them. A middleware offers common services for applications and eases the application development. Moreover, it tries to provide the transparency with regard to the heterogeneous components for the application layer. Complementary to the middleware are the programming language approaches for mobile ad hoc networks and wireless sensor networks. These approaches attempt to tackle some of the challenges such as discovery, network disconnections, and group communication, which are posed by the Internet of Things environment. However, they miss out on important characteristic of context awareness. And they have not been applied to a massive number of devices. To address all these challenges posed by the Internet of Things, a new middleware and language abstractions are needed. That was really insightful, Abhijit. Thanks for a wonderful presentation. I'm sure the audience will also be very pleased with such a rich and insightful session. We will be taking questions from the audience now. I remind um, you once again, audience, if you have any queries, please type in to the questions pane. If due to some time constraints we are not able to cover your question in today's session, we will definitely get back to you uh, and will post the entire Q&A document covering all the answers to your questions raised today. Also, I'm uh, really glad to invite you to our speaker session on the topic Internet of Things, Applications in E-Learning at DevLearn 2040. And on that note, we are also presenting a session on new possibilities with cloud-based healthcare records at Cloud Expo 2040. To those of you who are interested for the Cloud Expo session, please contact us at hsplmkting at the rate harbingergroup.com for your free VIP gold pass or golden pass to the Cloud Expo. Please do write to us. This is a very good opportunity for you. So Abhijit will now take a few questions from the audience. And I can see a few on the, on the questions page. So um, this is what Josh is asking. Uh, does sensor networks have to be IPv6 ready in near future? Okay. Uh, most of the current wireless sensor platforms 
use IEEE 802.15.4 as a physical and medium access control layer. The diversity of proto protocol makes it difficult for the sensor network to seamlessly integrate with the existing IP network. The adoption of IP as the layer 3 protocol to connect the wireless sensors has been slow due to belief that IP is too large to fit on a memory constraint device. Yet a real Internet of Things requires the large address space of IPv6. Hence, severely memory constraint devices can fulfill the requirements for IPv6 in the near future. Okay, great. I hope this answers your question, Josh. Um, another question this which is popping up is uh, from Kim. Is there any standardized protocol stack available for IoT? So, as from my understanding, various developments are going on in this front. Researchers from the OpenWSN team from Berkeley are creating an open source implementation of protocol stack based on IoT standards using a variety of hardware and the software platforms. If we talk in terms of the networking perspective, the introduction of the IETF Slovan protocol family has been instrumental in connecting the low power radios to the internet. From the application perspective, the introduction of IETF COIP protocol, that is the constrained application protocol family, has been instrumental in ensuring that application layers and application themselves do not need to be re-engineered to run over low power embedded network. Great. Great. Let's see what uh, next, what's the next question. I think it is from Arun. Uh, he is asking if there are any middleware platforms or frameworks available for IoT. Uh, yes, there are some frameworks which offers the middleware capabilities for the IoT. Aura is one of them. It is a middleware that supports interacting with complex devices, example digital cameras, and their integration. Hydra is another middleware framework for Okay, great. So my team informs me that we can take one more question before we end uh, this session. And we uh, believe me, we have a lot of questions. I can see 20 odd questions in the question pane. So uh, we cannot cover all of them uh, at, in this session itself. So we'll be getting back to all the unanswered questions in the Q&A document, uh, which will be posted on our website. So uh, let's come to the last question which is asked by Ron and he is asking that uh, can RFID powered sensors play a key role in uh, Internet of Things? Okay, well it all depends. A number of applications require a more reliable energy source before they can be implemented in the real world. In some of these cases, wireless battery free sensors based on RFID can be a good fit. A passive RFID sensor has an on-demand reliable source of energy that takes out the dependency on the environment conditions for the sensor to transmit the required data. However, if they cannot measure or transmit when there is no nearby RFID reader to send the RF power. So thank you everyone for attending uh, this session and um, do visit us at uh, our company website that is www.harbingersystems.com and uh, if you have any queries please write us uh, at uh, hsplinspiredharbingergroup.com. Thank you for attending the session.